file again and upload another document. You have the option to upload in the Additional Evidence section. Including these additional documents now while you are working on your online application can help make the process easier. You can also bring them to your naturalization interview. You will see the different types of evidence that you need to provide in this section based on your previous answers. For example, if you answer that you have children, provide evidence of your parental relationship. To request a disability exemption to the English or Civics requirements, you will need to upload a copy of the Medical Certification for Disability Exemptions, Form N-648. Scroll through each evidence section and read the information carefully to determine if you have provided all your supporting documents. You can provide any additional evidence that will help support your responses on the application. Part 2, Section 6, Review and Submit. The last section is Review and Submit. Click Review Application to review your answers. A red alert means there is something missing in your application. You cannot submit your form until you fix this issue. A yellow warning means you may be missing information that could slow down the review process. You can still submit your form. A green check mark means you have completed all required fields. Review your answers before you submit. You can view the summary on the page or click View Draft Case Snapshot to access a draft application for your records. You will have access to a final copy of your application after you submit it, and you can print the final copy for your records. Remember, you can also exit at any time and come back within 30 days to submit your application. Before submitting your application, you must read and agree to the applicant's statement. It is important that you take the time to read through and understand the statement, check the box, then provide your electronic signature. The final step is paying the application fee. Select how you would like to pay for your application. You can securely pay for your fee using a checking or savings account or debit or credit card. Fill out the necessary payment information. Review your payment information. When you are ready to submit, click Continue. This will submit your payment and complete the final step in the application filing process. You have successfully submitted your application for naturalization. You can view the summary on the page or click Final Copy of Your Application in the statement. Select how you would like to pay for your application. You can Securely pay for your fee using a checking or savings account. Welcome everybody. So, um, huh, 
let's see. First off, uh, I haven't stopped the GED prep tutorial project. I'm actually about, I'd say, halfway through the science part. Um, and I'm going to keep doing, like, I'm just starting with math and science. Those are my uh, best subjects for when I was doing school. But, um, and then I got to thinking, well, first let me direct your attention to this. So let's go back to brainstorms. So this is, I was working on this a little bit today as well, just adding some stuff. And, um, you know, moved the Star Wars, Star Trek stuff to the bottom and, like, the more serious stuff in the beginning. And especially this part. I will direct your attention to this again. Interest-free loans. So these are just, you know, these are my brainstorms. These are my ideas, like, you know, projects that I want to do, tutorials that I want to do, streams that I want to do. You know, all of these different things that I could be doing, you know, for the greater good. And that's why I'm doing these things. You know, the GED prep and now a U.S. citizenship prep. Um, but anyways, yeah, to get to us, what I call a Star Trek era, or, you know, that point of where civilization is, t well, the point of civilization where we can do away with things like, you know, become a cashless society, or, you know, maybe not even that extreme for a while, but, you know, at least get to that, or be like a united planet, like stop with all the, get world peace, you know, and all the stuff that everybody's all on about, you know, it's pretty, it's a pretty nifty thing course there's going to be some bumps in the road but you know i believe that's ultimately what we're working towards and especially with all this uh this twitter news and the open communication and elon musk like you know he said some pretty interesting things about that and whether no matter what your opinion is on it you know he makes a good point like for the importance of civilization we do need open and available communication so whether there's going to be things, I'm not going to get into that. I, I try to stay away from politics the best I can. You know, it's it's bad for my health, my heart. Like, you know, it's just, you know, which is funny because <laughs> my best friend who actually gave me this shirt, uh, he's the complete opposite politically, and he loves that I am doing this uh, citizenship thing. So anyways, um, I digress. But uh, I wanted to touch base on that. So brainstorm page, like why, you know, a Rai, Alex, like why are you doing these streams? Why are you making these videos? Well, because it's the right thing to do. I mean, and I took notes. I wanted to say, you know, I'm very grateful for Amazon, Twitch, um, Google for YouTube and CodePen, you know, the fine folks at Coding Game, Replit, and all of these tools and resources that are helping me with this. So actually, let me pull up my notes here too. So, anyways, yeah, that's my buddy talking about that. Let me give my notes. Um, yeah, so that's the why. Now, on to, and what I was just reading as we were waiting for that five-minute countdown, here is the barrier. So, so what I did is, once I started thinking, you know, U.S. citizenship, you know, we've got this whole nonsense about people trying to get in, we're the melting pot, like, why is it so hard? What's, what's the deal? Um, and I just found this right before the stream. Because um, I was doing practice tests all day, and honestly, it's not that bad. I did still miss two out of, like, 60. Um, and that's back... Wait, no. So that's the video to watch, and that's... Um, let's see, yeah, so that's the second link that I posted up here in the chat. Um, the N-400. And so this actually, this little 20-minute video will guide you through everything you need to know about... Um, um, about applying for citizenship, naturalization, you know, whatever they want to call it. That's the same thing, naturalization, citizenship. Um, I'd like to go back and watch this again, actually, because I still have a couple other questions, but right here you can see it, um, possibly, how's it? $725. So, because I was thinking to myself, as I'm doing these practice tests, I was like, this really isn't that bad, you know? I mean, granted, like... I've been here all my life. Like, I know government. I actually took some government classes in college. Don't remember a lot of them because all my focus was on computer science. But, you know, I've studied this stuff. So, of course, it's going to be easier for me. But, you know, someone who's trying to flee here from Central or South America, like, they might not know all the stuff. But at the same time, all it'll take is a couple of hours of studying. They actually give you all of the questions that you can be asked. Here, let's see, 128 questions. And that is, I mean, it's on the website, but just to be safe, let's go ahead and put that in the chat as well. So there's all you need to know for the actual, like, studying. Oh, and what did I just squish up? Okay, well, and I also put a code pen. So 
let's go to that as well. So I started making a code pen before I realized they had all the answers um, just available. Uh, that's what I do. I like to make a code for it, but um, let's go to yeah, US System Test Prep. And what I was doing, well, let's hold up until it loads so in case it glitches. What I was doing is I was trying to get all of the 100, uh, actually I thought it was 100 questions because they increased it to 128 recently. I think back in 2008 it was only 100 questions and, and all that information is right here. You've got the two, okay so this is actually the practice test, oh the 2008 practice test. Either way, I was doing really well, you know, getting through them. Anybody can do them and this is available, like anybody can hop on and just practice these. And so I had gone through and, uh, yeah, I want to say like three tests and got about 40 questions. And so I copied down what the question was, what the correct answer was, at least my guess. And then once I did it, I copied the correct answer, um, uh, how they phrase it. And then, and it's multiple choice on these practice tests, by the way. But yeah, and I got about 40 questions done. Oh, okay. So yeah, down here. And then I realized, well, they, they have them all. So, um, yeah, so I guess the real barrier to citizenship is that cost. Like, there's no getting out of it. I mean, unless you're over 75 years old, then you can just pay $640. But that's, yeah, we, we've all got that lying around. So, so it makes sense now. This part makes sense. Um, but anyways, uh, I do want to encourage, um, you know, anybody trying to get citizenship, you know, it's a very easy process once you get past the money. And and I, I did want to say, I do have it in my notes, um, this is nothing to be taken lightly, too. Like, part of citizenship, you know, reading through this stuff, um, you are pledging yourself to this country. So if you want to be a citizen, it, it's a pretty serious deal. It's a pretty big deal. So, um, and also, <laughs> I wrote a note in here, Starship Troopers. You know, just kind of a funny, you know, fun thing to think about. If you've ever seen that movie, one of the biggest uh, points about it was in order to gain your citizenship, you had to serve in the military. So, and I think I actually saw if you serve in the military for the U.S., you don't have to pay this fee. But, you know, that's, that's a big decision. So, you know, don't make it lightly. But at the same time, if you're in a rush to get over here and you don't have this money, I think that's an option. So here, let's see. Additionally, persons applying on the basis of military service. So if you're going to come and serve in our military you don't have to pay, which is, a, it's kind of a dark and dark message to send the world. However, here is a way to get citizenship. So, and again, like this, I'm just tired of hearing all the rigmarole and for the, for the good of civilization, for the good of humanity, for the good of the earth and, and beyond, like, you know, this is one of the things that maybe we could try to work on. So, because um, eventually it'll be a global citizenship you know, once we become a united globe, hopefully, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. For now, though, you know, if you're out there trying to do this, this is, this video is for you. So, um, without further ado, let's do some practice tests. Uh, this will be a nice short and sweet stream. Um, I'm going to upload this to the YouTube later. Uh, because, yeah, I, mean, I really, I think one of the other barriers for people is they just, they get sh scared away or they shy away from it because they don't want to go through all this stuff but honestly you got a 20 minute video let's see where was that right here 20 minute video not even it's 19 minutes okay two seconds shy but 20 minutes of your life watch this video you know and then watch this video we'll do some practice tests here and also another thing to point you out to well here's the things that they talk about in the video all the different things you can go through they've got you know, test updates, they've got, um, I think I even saw somewhere that if you're young, you don't have to take the test in English, I think you can take the test in Spanish, like, um, another thing, uh, I was going to reach out to a couple of my Spanish-speaking colleagues and see if they would do a stream of this, but I don't know if it would really be necessary, I mean, a lot of people speak English nowadays, I, I mean, I, it would be nifty if it was available in Spanish. That would be more helpful, for sure. Um, but it would be good to learn some English, too. I mean, not saying, like, you have to learn English to be here, but it is the language of the country, and so in order to function, it's a good idea. And it's for your own benefit, too. Like, to avoid any awkwardness with some of our uh, 
less than pleased people to have Spanish speaking people here like you know it could cause troubles just make it easy on yourself um, try to learn some English I mean I speak Spanish horribly but at least I try you know and like if I had to move to a Spanish speaking country I, I could survive I even learned a little Portuguese too just because I was interested in it but um, I digress so what I wanted to direct your attention to was the frequently asked questions here we go yeah commonly asked questions which you can find those here so under the learn about US learn about citizenship go down to commonly asked questions and because I had some questions you know like if I fail will I be you know ooh also I wonder oh yeah so I think that answers our question right here sorry a bunch of oohs and ahs paying for a test and see I'm, I'm about to certify in some cybersecurity stuff so I know it's expensive to do those certs and uh, I know that's a different situation here but it's similar in the sense that if you fail it you have to pay the same amount to do it again and if that's the six hundred seven hundred dollars yeah six hundred forty dollars is just a base one and then you have to pay an additional eighty five for biometric services which to me that tells it's like fingerprinting or you know maybe they get your DNA on file I don't know biometric that's you know what you are as far as authentication you know your your fingerprints or your your iris or whatever it is you're paying for it so um, but yeah uh, the reason I bring that up is it looks like if you don't hack it which and these tests are super easy too if you take the time if you study if you look at all 120 questions you know just kind of read over them a few times or even watching this video again because we'll do some practice tests uh, you should be okay um, oh, another note this is just a funny aside for anyone who knows who Jay Leno is you can look at him up on YouTube but he used to actually do this uh, skit called jaywalking where he would walk around the streets of New York and he would interview people asking very similar questions to what's on the test to be a citizen and they would have no idea and they you know grew up here so and again, I miss too. Uh, I'm I've born and raised here. I've left the country a few times, but never more than you know, total nothing more than a month. So I'm pretty American. Plus, I'm in the middle, like Colorado. So you don't get much more American than like right in dead center. But I digress. So, anyways, yep, yeah, actually the Colorado flag. Thought that was nifty. Anyways, so study, practice, 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 practice. Um. Yeah, and then if you want to get your GED, watch my GED video and you know, you'll look at my YouTubes for that. But anyhow, just trying to think of anything, all these projects, so what can I be doing to help, you know, do something. So anyways, without further ado, let's uh let's take some practice tests. Where'd that go? Here we go. Alright, so Well, we'll finish this one out. Because this was before I realized that they had all of the questions and the answers listed. I thought I had to keep doing this until I cycled through and found all 128. And like I said, I got, what, 40, 50? But anyways. Okay, so without further ado, here are the questions that make you a citizen. So who vetoes bills? Alright, so that's the president. So whenever the bills are made in Actually, I guess we don't need to go too far in depth. We just need to know. The president vetoes the bills. Um, and, oh, and they give you a nice little description here, which actually... And I'll leave this up. If you go to my code pen for this, um, that's what I do. I'll give the correct answer, and then I copy and paste their description. So why is this the answer? Um, so, yeah. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now let me put this on the thing, so... Let's see... Watch... The video... The inf info video here. No, what? Informative... Whatever basically that and then do an href so we can do a link and 
plop the link in there. And then I usually just actually just do the link as the actual what you click so you can see where you're going. Um, yeah, so there you go. So there's the informative video. Go and close that. Um, yeah, so the N400. And also you can ask Emma too. So if you have any questions, they have an AI that will answer your questions. Oh, you can't see. Here you go. <laughs> ask Emma. Yeah, the mirror image. So this is an AI. I asked Emma, I was like, well, how much does the form cost? I found the form in the video, the N400, and I said, how much does the form cost? And it directed me to this video, which then answered my question, if you can see where I've watched it too, you know, this part two, section six, review and submit. That's where you see the price tag for becoming a citizen. So. And again, it's not just the money, it's not just knowing who the presidents were or who you know does what in government and this and that. Martin Luther King pops up in there too. It's also pledging yourself to this country. So again, you know, you kinda gotta be a little serious about this, so but here is the door that they keep talking about to come through to enter the country illegally or legally, sorry. And avoid illegally. So anyways, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and do some more practice questions. So, next question. Okay, what is the capital of the United States? So, you know, all great cities, but that is Washington, D.C. Okay. Alright, name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. Okay, now this could be a little trickier because we've been in almost every world war. Um, we've been in World War One, or actually, I don't know if we... Eh, we did get... See, now I'm, a, I'm not a big history buff, so, and again, I, I got two of these wrong when I was doing them. Um, so, the best thing I could do, say is, you know, think in the 1800s, well, that, the Civil War, Mexican and American War, that sounds about right. World War One and World War Two were in the 1900s, so you already know that's not a thing. Same with Korean War, so it can only be, and also, I should point out, this won't be multiple choice when you take the test. I believe they just ask you the questions and then you and you can only miss four out of ten I think now the test is 20 questions again the, the if you want to do the fact but anyways let's just check that out and then it says correct so we were involved in four wars in the 1800s so again we're pretty much in every war um, <laughs> it's a safe bet unfortunately but yeah. Okay. The House of Representatives has how many voting members? Ooh. Jeez, I don't even know. Let's see. I want to say it's at least like two, because, okay, so real quick, the House of Representatives is based on population, so um, it's at least two per state, so we're looking at already w over a hundred. One hundred is shy. Plus, I think there's like, let's say there's like six or eight for some states. So, you know, two hundred sounds good. Let's see. But I'm thinking out of these, it's gonna be one of these. You know, they'll make them really close together. All right, I, I just guessed four hundred and thirty-five. So that might be one of the tricky ones. I mean. Again, I don't think they give you multiple choice when you take the actual test. These are just the practice tests, and these are available too. Like again, like so. In fact, let's go ahead and throw this here so you can follow along. Express practice. Test. There you go. So now it's there. All right. Well, like U.S. representative for how many years? This is one of the questions I got wrong. It's actually two years. Yes. Six years for a senator. Or for a U.S. representative. What group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? Not one of our proudest moments? Africans. That was our slave thing. So... What is the political party of the president now? And there's a couple of questions about the current president. Um, hopefully everyone knows this. It's President Joe Biden. And he is from the Democratic Party. So, and 
for questions like this, you're only going to, it's a 50-50 between either Democratic or Republican. We haven't nominated on, outside of that, you know. We have independents, but we haven't had any presidents like that. So, correct answer, Democratic Party. Okay. Now, what do we call the first ten commandments of the, or amendments of the Constitution? That is known as the Bill of Rights. Yes? Yes. Okay. And these are just things that we learned growing up in grade school. We talked about this stuff. We had classes about this. I, I, I took classes in college. I mean, again, didn't pay attention to them as much as I probably should have. But, yeah. So, you got to be patient with yourself. Just take time. All right. So, why does the flag have 13 stripes? This is for the, well, it's the colonies. Let's see. Yep. So, we originally had 13 colonies when America first started. So, there you go. It's actually the red is supposed to stand for the blood lost on you know the fields of battle. We've got 50 stars for 50 states. Um, yeah, there's there's the whole description here. But the reason for 13 original colonies. So, okay, what did the Declaration of Independence do? Let's see, we gained our independence from Great Britain. So it's right here. France is close, but no, we fought that our independence war with Great Britain. Um, women right to vote, that didn't happen until much later, and freed the slaves again much later. So, there we go. When was the Decla Declaration of Independence adopted? Sometime in 1776. So, now, July 4th, that's our actual Independence Day. This is the only one that makes sense, but, yeah. You can't go wrong with 1776 for anything about our independence. So, and that is our actual Independence Day. Um, let's see. We elect a president for how many years? Okay, the president, I'm a little more familiar with this than the representatives and the Senate. That's four for president, and again, two, let's see. So, four for president, two for Senate, and six for, or no, two for House of Representatives, six for Senate. Sorry, I think I was mixing them up. Okay. When is the last day you can send in a federal income tax forms? This is uh, tax day, April 15th. So, But I always try to get mine done much faster than that. Because you get that refund, hopefully. Alright, what is the name of the Vice President of the United States now? That's Kamala Harris. Dick Cheney was the Vice President, so that's to throw you off. Um, back during Bush? Yeah. Yeah, it was Bush Cheney. Okay, anyways. So Kamala Harris, yep, there she is. And a lot of these it's really hard not to know because we've, you know, got, I mean, a little bit of studying, so. All right, name one state that borders Mexico. So actually there's another question in here about which states, or name one state that borders Canada. So you just need to pull up a map. You can see oh, just off the top of my head we've got California, Texas, uh, New Mexico. Yeah, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Texas. And that's it, yeah. Then Texas is the last one eastward. But as long as you said Texas or, you know, California or or picked one of these, New Mexico is a tricky one because it only borders just for a little bit there. But And then again, Idaho is a tricky one for if you got the Canada question because it still borders Canada by this little, little bit right here. So, um, anyways, uh, the choices... And these are tricky, too, because, you know, Texas, that's why I pointed out Texas being the last one on the east, because, you know, you might think that one of these two, but California. So. Okay, and that's the rest of that first test. So let's go ahead and do another, I mean, we've only been doing this for half an hour. Let's do another couple of tests. You can just keep clicking through them. All right, let's start the practice test. Actually, wait, let's go back. Let's put this. In the here we go this in the chat okay so if you go there then you can start the practice test okay what is one thing Benjamin Franklin is famous for he did a lot of things let's see but he was not a president he was never president um, he didn't invent the airplane and um, so it's US diplomat so I like he wasn't young by any means in the constitutional convention so yeah US diplomat funny enough you could check out Franklin's uh, Wikipedia page he 
I just recently found out that he submitted a paper on flatulence to a colleague and when he was being a diplomat um, over in Europe. He was, I think it was someone in France that he was corresponding with, and, and it was, yeah, a flatulence thing. So interesting, but for these purposes, he did, you know, he could have said the bifocals. Um, he even made a Franklin stove. Let's see. I think it says all that stuff in here. Yeah, he invented bifocal eyeglasses. He invented the Franklin stove. He was a writer of Poor Richard's Almanac. Um, he experimented with electricity, the, the whole kite and the key thing. That really did happen. Um, I was watching a special on this on PBS the other day, actually. And, yeah, that was a science experiment for electricity. And he also did some other more mundane electricity experiments with generators and stuff. So, yeah. Interesting guy. All right, what does the judicial branch do? So this is... The judicial, so think judges and courts and lawyers and all that good stuff. So what do they do? Uh, yeah, they resolve disputes. Um, actually, I want to say all of the above. Reviews laws, decides if law goes against the Constitution. Or maybe it's just resolve disputes. If we might get this wrong, let's see. Oh, okay, so it does all of those. Um, but what it does not do is anything with making the laws that is the legislative branch and then the executive branch is think president presidential cabinet that he can veto the laws so legislative creates the laws you know that's the house of representatives and the senate they make the laws the president approves or denies the law and then judicial enforces the law so those are the three branches and that's another question in here as well let's see yep we elect a u.s representative for how many years two and I did not know this. I mean, I just guessed eight, because who knows? And those, we can re-elect them as many times, and that's why I actually asked my buddy some of these questions, too, and he got them wrong, and, you know, so I didn't feel too bad. But, again, so two is the term, or the amount of years for a term for a House representative. All right, so let's see. What ocean is on the east coast of the United States? That's the Atlantic. Um, and then Pacific is on the west coast, and then... Arctic, I think, Alaska touches, but that's general just geography, so you should know as a global citizen, but yeah, Atlantic is on the east. That'd have been embarrassing if I got that wrong. Uh, what did the Emancipation Proclamation do? Okay, so this is dealing with slaves. Um, freed slaves, yep, in most southern states. And again, women didn't get the right to vote until much later. Um, I believe it slaves got the right to vote. Uh, they had the three-fifths clause. And then first it was three-fifths clause where they were only worth three-fifths of one vote. And then it evolved into, okay, black men or African-American men can vote. And then women got the right to vote much later. Um, yeah. So, but this one, Emancipation Proclamation, freed the slaves. So, and again, Abraham Lincoln, he was the president during this time. This was the Civil War. There's a question in here about this being the cause of the Civil War, which it was. It was the main thing. The South wanted to keep slavery because their uh, manufacturing and their agriculture depended on it. They needed the fields to be tilled and tended to by slaves. Uh, the North didn't want it. They wanted to abolish slavery, which would have shut down the economy of the South. So that's the, the cause of the Civil War little brief little history it's much more in depth than that very bloody very brutal brutal not one of our proudest moments so all right let's see what major event happened on september 11th 2001 i believe every american remembers where they were at when this happened i know i do this was the planes in our tower attack the terrorist attack in the united states now let's just make sure just good test taking etiquette make sure there isn't a better answer but yes terrorists attacked the united states there we go. And you can see the videos of that, and it's all, it's all bad. So, next question. The idea of self-government is in the first three words of the Constitution. Hmm. What are these words? So the Constitution starts, yeah, we the people. Interesting how they phrase it like that. The idea of self-government. So, yeah, it's we the people find these truths to be self-evident. Let's see. Okay. Now, I guess that one is just useful just to know what the... 
Hey, what's up, time traveler? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I know this isn't the usual coding stream. We're doing, uh, we're switching gears here, doing some philanthropy. So, but yeah, welcome to the stream. Let's see. So there were 13 original states. Name three. Okay, so the 13 colonies, you think about... I think I had a map. Or no, it has a map once you pick them correctly. So it's definitely not these western states. Those happen much later. Um, it could be these could be these, although Kentucky and Georgia, I think those are a little too far, far inland and not Florida, I believe for, Florida was much later, I think we actually um, got Florida from uh, uh, from Mexico or somewhere else but this one looks good I want to say that, okay good, and here's the map, here's the original 13 colonies I guess Maine is actually one of them it looks like is it? Let's let's see uh, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland. I don't see Maine. Did it? Huh. Well, anyways, that's the uh, that's New England. So this is what we call it. It's modern day New England. But this is the original, like the east coast of the country, are the original thirteen colonies. Okay. Name one right only for U.S. United States citizens. Let's see. So something that... Huh. I don't know. This one's tricky. Because we have freedom of religion. We have freedom of speech. And, and we have public school. But depending on... It's kind of a weird question to say, like... You know what is something we have that nobody else has I feel like the rest of the world is adopting these ideals like they're, they're, they're at least becoming more relaxed on things like religion and speech and information and knowledge so I'm going to say freedom of speech oh wow only a US citizen can vote in federal elections okay so there you go like I don't know them all um, and again I believe you can miss up to four if you're taking the 2008 version of the test and more than not more likely you're going to be taking the 2020 version of the test and I believe you can still miss four at least if not eight so it's a very low bar I mean we've missed one out of so far like 28 questions so that's okay I mean and again if you if you really bomb the test you can pay the 800 or 700 so much bucks what is that again just can't believe that. That is so expensive. Seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. You can take the test again. So, anyways, um, all right. What are the two type parts of the U.S. Congress? So think Senate and House of Representatives. There we go. Those are the two houses of the legislative branch that write our laws, and then the president either vetoes them or signs them into law. Okay. All right. Who vetoes bills? There you go. We already know. The president. The vice president could do it if the president is incapacitated. And then the vice president assumes the presidential duties. But it's neither here nor there. It's always the president. Okay. Plus, if the president's incapacitated, I think we would have a little more serious stuff going on than approving bills. So, but, no, no, you never know. That's how it works. A vice president steps up, and then and then so on down the line. Um, let's see. What is the name of the Speaker of the House of Representatives now? Oh. Well, <laughs> no, I want to say Nancy Pelosi. It's not going to be Mike Pence or Donald Trump or oh, actually, it could be Chuck Schumer. So, and that's, that's I'm a little confused. I know Nancy Pelosi is one of them, a Speaker of the House or I know Chuck Schumer is very... Well, let's try Nancy. Okay. So Nancy Pelosi is the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and I don't follow this as much as I should, I suppose, but it just drives me crazy, so I try to block out what's going on with our government most of the time. But, um, but yeah, so the Speaker of the House of Representatives. There's also the whip. Um, yeah, there's a few terms for lawmakers, but... So that's that one. Okay, so during the Cold War, what was the main concern of the United States? So without even looking, nuclear war and communism. Okay, and then you look up here. 
climate change was an issue back in the 1970s and then we ignored it and now it's back so and then the great depression that was around the dust bowl times like the 1930s and then of course slavery but none of these were the cold war cold war was the spread of communism and i actually found out according to the questions here that's why we got involved in the vietnam war and the korean war that was to stop the spread of communism so i didn't know that and you know right but I guess I refreshed my memory doing that. Alright, but as far as the Cold War, that was the Soviet Union and us, and we were, yeah, it was the threat of nuclear war and mutually assured destruction. Not to be confused with mutually assured construction. You know, funny concept, but anyways, that's all. Let's see, where is the Statue of Liberty? Why, that's in New York. It's more specifically, the New York Harbor. Um... San Francisco's on the complete other side of the country. Long Island's up there, I mean, but not quite. Um, and then Boston, in fact, I think Long Island's actually like tucked in New York, if I remember right, but I've never been up there. Definitely not Boston, so yeah, New York Harbor. Okay. Let's see. All right, there are four amendments to the Constitution about who can vote. Describe one of them. Okay, uh... It's not only citizens with a job. It's not 17 and older. It's... I mean, I want to just say it's 18 and older. Yeah, okay. So... Okay, here we go. So, all male citizens of any race can vote in 1870. So, like I was saying a little while ago, uh, it took us a while to get voting. Um, there was th the three-fifths clause where... Um, black people, African Americans, um, slaves were only worth three fifths of a vote. So if you owned a lot of slaves and you, you know, basically that was because at the time, well, a few reasons, but one of the reasons was, you know, a wealthy slave owner could have some political influence based on how many slaves they had because they were members of the community. I mean, they were, you know, still people down there and like, you know, and interacting with everyone. But yeah, so again, a dark time in our history. So. Anyways, but yeah, 18 and older to vote. Let's see. Why does the flag have 50 stars? Well, because we have 50 states. One star for each state, and we also have the Puerto Rico territory and Guam. I don't know. But, yeah, the states is what that's supposed to be. We have 50 states. Okay. Who makes federal laws? Oh, this is tricky. I want to say Congress, because that's also, like, the legislative of it. Yeah, okay. So, and again, that's legislative branch, um, sometimes known, a.k.a. Congress. Um, they meet in this building. That's where the <laughs> the insurrection was last year, two years ago. Yeah, last year. Um, but this is where the laws are made. And that's the House of Representatives and the Senate. I don't know how that works. I don't know, like, where. I just know that that dome. You know, again, I've never been to D.C. either, so... Alright, name two national holidays. And there are a lot of national holidays. So for this one, you know, I basically think, what is the most government-y? Like, I want to say it's Labor Day and Thanksgiving, but they actually list all of them, yeah. Not April Fool's, it's not a nationally recognized holiday. And I think Valentine's Day isn't either. Even though we celebrate it, a nationally recognized holiday means you're supposed to get it off from work and you're, off, you're supposed to get it off from school. So, so yeah. Okay, and how many U.S. Senators are there? Ah, there are two for each state, so 100. So, the way that the Senate works is it, there's just two for each yeah, okay, I wanted to make sure. Is that correct? And representatives are the different one. That's the varying one. So that's popular. Oh, I think we're lagging a little bit. Sorry, hold on. Okay. Well, I guess we could probably call this soon. I mean, no, we'll keep going. We'll finish this, maybe do one more practice test because that didn't take long. But yeah, representatives are varying amounts. They are based on population of a state. So, like, California has, like, several, I don't know, but, um, I don't even know how much we have here in Colorado, but Senate, it's two per every state, so, okay. What are the two major political parties, Democrat and Republican, the only ones you'll see in the 
presidential office um, for now. Okay, yeah, the elephant or the donkey. Two halves of the same hole. Anyways, and there we go. So that was another practice test. Again, these are not super hard. It's really like the biggest hurdle I'm seeing anyway is the money. Um, so, yeah, that is a very expensive door to get into the country. But, um, yeah, because once you're here, it's not that hard to be patriotic. I mean, America is awesome. Like, I mean, I wanted to feel. I am very patriotic. Like, I'm very proud of my country. Not to say that I'm going to, you know, it's it's tricky. I've got patriotism, but I don't want to knock any other country. We're one world, all that good stuff. But you know, once you're here, yeah, it's pretty easy to be devoted. Okay, well, let's do another practice test. All right, who lived in America before the Europeans arrived? Another dark time in our history. Really, it's just those two, just those two times. Uh, it was the American Indians, which are also better known as Native Americans. Um, Indians is kind of a racist term because uh, Columbus thought he hit India, and so he called them Indians, thinking they were from what is known today as India, which is completely other side of the world, but because um, they didn't even know that America was here. So, but Native Americans, um, and actually, I think a lot of them are ancestors of like Russian, Indo-Russian, anyways. Before he was president, Eisenhower. Oh, this is the other one that I missed. So Eisenhower was a general. What war was he in? Now, and I'm gonna try to find it. Uh, I actually learned all of the presidents, memorized them because of p funny pictures back when I was in school. Um, I think this was like in fifth grade. Um, yeah, so and I can still recite most of them, I think all of them, but anyways, so Eisenhower, trying to think about that time period, because again, we've been in just about every war, um, this is World War Two. I thought it was Vietnam, hmm, you know, at least I know it's not the Civil War, Civil War, you know, that's definitely Abraham Lincoln, plus that was way long ago, you know, the 1800s, whereas, you know, all these other wars, these are 1900s, actually, maybe, I think Spanish and American was around 1912, but World War II does make sense in hindsight for Eisenhower. But he was a general in World War II, so. Okay. Under our Constitution, some powers belong to the federal government. What is one power of the federal government? Okay, so. I want to say it's all of these. Well, maybe not police. That might be more state issue. Issue driver's licenses. Uh, declare a war. That's uh, I want to say that's the legislative. And so by federal government, I'm a little confused as to the terminology. Like that's kind of. I'm gonna say schooling and education. Nope, it was declare war. Okay, so Congress declares war. So again, the House of Representatives and the Senate, like our you know our politicians, they I knew that they declare war, but federal government we still have federal funding for our public school system so that's why I was thinking that you know schooling and education but I guess it is more state run so yeah they can still have some tricky questions there so declare war all right what stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful checks and balances yep that's like ingrained into our memories from from grade school so there we go Alright, what is the name of the national anthem? Uh, well, these are lyrics of it, but it's the Star Spangled Banner. Yes, good. <laughs> Although, I wasn't too sure about that one. I can see that one being a tricky one. Alright, who did the United States fight in World War II? Why, the Axis, right? Japan, Germany, and Italy. That's kind of just general history that everybody should know. Russia was on our side. Helped us. We work together. People seem to forget about that. All right. Next question. What is an amendment? Okay. So, yeah, a change. It's not the beginning of the Declaration of Independence, but yeah, it's it's a change to the Constitution or a, you know, oh, and by the way, this is also a law too. So, I'm not too happy with amendments. I honestly think we should just do a redraft and include all of them 
you know, because like women's right to vote is amendment in there, um, stuff like that. Uh, civil rights, I think, is an amendment. Like, I'm actually not familiar with the amendments. Let's see if they have. Uh, I just know that they exist. Let's see. The Nineteenth Amendment gave women right to vote. Yeah. So, and that's nineteen. We had to add nineteen things to our. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I guess, but bigger part of the Constitution. So, okay, name state that borders Canada. Okay, now this is the question that I had earlier. I was looking at the map to see all of the states. So, you're safe to say not Oregon, because Washington's above Oregon. Um, Maine is a pretty pretty good choice. South Dakota, not so much, because there's a North Dakota. So, North Dakota, this is without even looking at the map. Rhode Island and might be, but I know for a fact Maine is. In fact, let's pull up that map here. Because you've got Oh, let's see, Rhode Island is like down in here somewhere. I don't even know. But Maine is here. Uh, we got South Dakota here. We got Oregon here. So Oregon is still locked between, you know, Washington is the one that actually borders Canada, not Oregon. Same with the Dakotas. North Dakota would have been okay. And again, even Idaho technically borders Canada. But Maine, it's a good bet. So let's do that. Yep, and then it says there are 13 states that border Canada. So you got all this list, and I get a little confused with the Northeast because there's there's a lot of stuff going on up there. Oh yeah, and Alaska. That's uh, that's kind of a given too. Which is actually almost like the size of the U.S. for like half of the U.S. So a lot of people don't realize that. Well, anyways, I digress. So name one of the two longest rivers in the United States. Alright, so Mississippi, um, a good guess would be like the Rio Grande or Colorado, those are very long, but if, if I remember right, it's actually the, the two longest rivers are the Missouri and the Mississippi. Yes, because I saw this in this question earlier. I knew, I guessed the Mississippi earlier, that's, you know, again, we can go back to that map. It's all through here, like along the Mississippi, like, uh, I want to say it comes all the way from the Great Lakes. But I know it actually, like, you know, plus it's just one of the most famous rivers in, in the U.S., so. Okay, what is one promise you make when you become a United States citizen? Okay, so. This one was a little tricky. I did not realize this, but it makes sense in hindsight. You have to give up loyalty to other countries. Which is weird, because I've heard of dual citizenship. So... I guess you can have dual citizenship, but this is the answer that they want you to do, give up loyalty to other countries. So if you want to be a US, an American, a U.S. citizen, you got to be loyal, and that makes sense. I mean, you know, you got to have some patriotism. Like, if you're going to live here and can call yourself one of us, like, you know, you, you do have to do some of these things. However, I don't know. I, I, I still want to look into, like, refugee status and just kind of make myself a little more educated on, like, what about if you don't want to be a citizen but you need to get out and you need to you know go somewhere else oh, nah. another day so oh okay how many amendments does the constitution have well we know there's more than 19 because we just had that um oof three of the answers Let's see I have no idea let's try 27 okay cool I guessed but um we knew it was over 20 because the right to vote for women was 19, so as we just saw in that other question. Okay, so that could be a tricky one. That's more of like a flashcard thing. You might want to, if you're studying for taking the test, maybe make some self flashcards because, again, you get all 128 of the questions. So. Okay, and what ocean is on the east coast of the United States? Atlantic. And then we got Pacific on the west, so I think we had this on our last test, yeah. What was the name of the vice president? Uh, we had this one too. That's Kamala Harris. Dick Cheney was a vice president. Joe Biden's the current president. And Donald Trump was our last president. So, and again, I like to think that with how much communication and media we have throughout the world, I'm pretty sure the whole world knows who our president is. Um, same with, you know, Russia and China. And actually, Boris, the president of. UK is in the news a lot. Anyways, so that's our vice president. <laughs> I, I, I digress a lot. Alright, who does a U.S. senator represent? It's a state. Let's see. All the people of the state, yes. 
That's a funny answer. Um, no, they still work for all the people, even if you don't vote for them. Same with this one. That's definitely not true. It's not based on the political party. It's not based on... And they don't represent themselves. It's all people of the state. So... And if they give you multiple choice on this test, even better. But, you know, that's why I'm trying to not look at the things and just kind of say it and see if it's an answer. So, let's see. During the Cold War, what was the main concern? Again, that was nuclear war and communism. So, here we go. And we had that question. And that's why I had to take it a few times just to get those 40 questions earlier because you get a lot of the same ones. But, anyways. It's all right. So, what is the last day? Yep, same thing. We had this. That's April 15th, last day of taxes or tax day. Okay. What did the Emancipation Proclamation do? It freed the slaves. Let's see. Yep, freed slaves in most southern states. Oh, yeah. So I think it took a while to get it all. But definitely not World War I. <laughs> definitely not. This is our Declaration of Independence and the Revolutionary War is what we got our independence from Great Britain with. Um, women the right to vote not until the 19 late 1900s so yeah freed most of the slaves well that's sad okay how many US senators are there again there's two senators for every state so that's a hundred okay because again we have 50 states all right and what are two rights in the Declaration of Independence so the rights are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and if you look up here <laughs> liberty and justice, life and death. No, it's this one. Life and pursuit of happiness, and then it's just leaving out liberty, which it does say right here. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Again, one of those things that's just drilled into our minds at a young age. Like, this is what being an American is all about. So, And what month do we vote for, <laughs> vote for president? All right, that's November, although they don't actually take office until, I want to say, January or February. Like, not until much later. October is just... I think there's primaries there, but the actual when we vote for our president is November. Yes, there we go. Oh, because of crop cycles. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so farmers influence that. Same with daylight savings time. That's supposedly why we have that. Okay, well, that was the test. We just did it, what, twice? Two or three times? At least twice. Um, I think we did it two full times, and then we finished up the extra one. So, anyways, and that's right around an hour. That's perfect. Um, so, really just good luck um, getting the money together. Uh, if you have any questions, there's tons of links. Like I said, watch that video. Um, I, have, I have the video link right here. You know, watch the video, and then... Once you're there, like here, let's do it. So let's click the link, open lag out the, oh yeah, okay. There you go. There's some stuff to look at. Anyways, what I was looking for is practice test. <laughs> you can just search practice test. And here you go. There's the 2008 practice test. Study for the test 2020 version. Okay. Oh, yes. And the, so there's, there's plenty of ways to do this. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Then, so you don't have to do that, let me go ahead and put this in my code pen just to add, let's see. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead. Yeah. yeah, let's go ahead and just do another one of these. Okay, and this is, for anyone curious, these are list items in a unordered list for HTML. Um... It's, uh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. Too much. Okay, let's see. Okay, and now. Oh. 
Where did I find it? There we go. And really, it's just a matter of, you know, I would recommend taking the practice test several times. You know, you just make sure. The more times you take it, the better chances you'll have. Especially if you're going to invest, you know, 725 bucks. It's a lot of money. So, you know, just be smart about it. Uh, yeah, so there's the practice test, there's the video, and then from there it's just a matter of going through all of these things on the side. Just click through each one of these things on the left. You've got your very, um, uh, let's see, what is it? Learn about citizenship. Yeah, just, just take some time and read through all these. You know, they've got so much information here. They've got an artificial intelligence bot to answer your questions. I'm sure there's people that I, I saw there's, um, let's see, you know, there's yeah there's all sorts of stuff you know so we're definitely not trying to keep people from being a citizen you know, we'll take your money apparently but um but no I mean we are welcoming this is the melting pot this is that's what this country was based off of so you know best of luck to you I hope this helps um and again I, I was going to try to find someone that spoke Spanish to do this but I'm thinking you got it like if you can maybe even watch this in closed captioning in Spanish I think that's a thing too so and again I will be uploading this to YouTube immediately after this but for now I think I'm going to yeah go for a walk and then get back to work on my GED project so and for those of you who don't know I'm doing a whole video series on GED prep as well so, so if anybody wants to get that taken care of and of course I do computer science streams so, you know, check out my YouTube, dab a little bit, help yourself to some knowledge and some tutorials. So, okay, well, thanks for stopping by, everyone. And, um, yeah, like I said, the main thing, the main reason I wanted to do this was, this is like the GED project. This is something that I believe should be out there and available, and there should be awareness raised about this. And, you know, anybody wanting to become a citizen, boom, here you go. There's the steps up here, these links, these websites and this video will be up on the YouTube. So again, thank you for stopping by, and good luck. Alright, see ya.